and welcome to our prayer meeting here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. We thank the Lord for our Thanksgiving last week and of course we always have to be thankful every every day, not only during Thanksgiving. And in, in relation to that, we wanted to sing today the hymn, Count Your Blessings, that, so that we would, in each day of our lives, that we would count our blessings to name them and to always be grateful to the Lord for all that he has given us, and as he has commanded us, in everything to give thanks. Sing with us. When upon life's pillows you are tempted, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. Number two. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God hath done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God hath done. Number three. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you is well untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Number four. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. Let's count our blessings and see, watch and see what the Lord is doing in our lives. And now we're going to have our meditation from Pastor Alvis Ramos. We welcome you to our prayer meeting, which is every Wednesday here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. 
Uh, it's uh, our usual time at 6.30. And so, again, it is always a joy to be in the house of the Lord and a delight uh, to talk about him uh, through the pages of his word. And so tonight, um, why don't we bow uh, in a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless our time together. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we once again come to you as the one true God, the living God, the holy God that we worship. And we come to you in the precious and mighty name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge your presence in our lives because of the precious faith that you have given us in order for us to see and believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And through that, Lord, we were ushered into um, your, the privilege of being called your children. We um, appropriate uh, your promise and believe your promise that our sins are forgiven and that you have removed the guilt of all our sins and that we are cleansed by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that died on the cross uh, that on that cross he paid uh, the punishment and the penalty of our sins. And as a result of that faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us the assurance of heaven. And not only the assurance of heaven, but your indwelling presence in the person of your spirit. And you promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And that you have given us all the spiritual blessings uh, and the richness of heaven because of your son. And so, Father, we exalt you, we worship you, we bring to you our adoration and praise and ask that you would bless our time together. And we also thank you, Father, for all the manifold uh, blessings that you continue to pour into our lives on a daily basis. We ask now that you would bless the teaching of your word. Uh, may it be a source of encouragement to each one of us. And may it lift our spirit to a level that is really spiritual. And may you, Lord, imprint, allow us to remember your precious word so that through and by your word and the working of the Holy Spirit, we will grow uh, in the true grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our hope and prayer now for this we ask in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. Um, last Wednesday, we uh, talked about uh, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 the uh, invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to each one of his children to invite him, to allow him to come in and, and sup or join in and be in intimate communion with him. We talked about the blessings of that invitation. Today, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, pleasure of prayer, the pleasures of prayer or uh, the blessings that comes when we put value um, and priority uh, into prayer. Uh, the passage is in Jeremiah 33, verse 33. I mean, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Uh, it says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Uh, this is the uh, revelation of God to Jeremiah. Um, it was during that time when the people of Judah were rebelling against God uh, because of their idolatry, because of their disobedience, their hardness of heart, and the, they're called by God as a steep-necked people. And the Assyrian army is about to invade you know, uh, Jerusalem, which is the capital uh, city of uh, Judah, uh, the place where they have their worship. And so God has told the, had told the Jeremiah to warn his people of the impending judgment. Uh, and also with that warning is the, comes the assurance that God would redeem his people back. He would punish them because of their disobedience. But after going through that punishment, uh, God would restore them as a people and because of their unrepentant heart, uh, they were uh, the walls of Jerusalem, the houses were destroyed by you know the enemies, and therefore the enemies, uh, the Babylonians, uh, brought them uh, as exiled to Babylon, and they stayed there for seventy years until they return. Um, and so this is a wonderful promise of God, even though at that time 
that they were willfully disobeying the Lord. And because they are God's chosen people, God will not um, leave them nor forsake them as, as God promised to us as Christians that as the moment that you and I receive the Lord Jesus Christ, the indwelling presence of his spirit is in us and God will never leave us nor abandon us. That is the same promise with the Old Testament believers, uh, exactly the same promise to us, New Testament Christians. And there is always an assurance that, you know, God would always bring him back to us so that he would fulfill what he started, what he began, the good work in us, that he would fulfill it, uh, complete it, until all of us will be ushered into his kingdom. And so, beloved in the Lord, uh, for us uh, believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, prayer is indeed a human privilege. Since it's a human privilege, it is also in the sense, in the spiritual aspect of it, it is a divine right. Uh, uh, how do I say it in Tagalog? Uh, ito ay makalangit na uh, pag-aari natin. It is our right. Yes, it is so a human privilege, but it is also a divine right given to us. I say that because it is a privilege since God, unmerited grace, the Lord Jesus Christ, all right, that we believe and trusted, you know, our salvation, right? It is a privilege since God's grace, the unmerited favor of God in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ that is living in us, Therefore, it is the source of our privilege that we are indeed children of God. It is not by our own good works that we become children of God. It is the grace of God in Christ that we believed in, all right? And the moment that you and I trusted Christ, at that moment, right away, we were given the stamp mark that we belong to God. And that stamp mark is the seal of the Holy Spirit that we are eternally for God, with God, and belong to God. I say that because it is a right, because that right came from the Father. It is given to us that one of the privileges that we have, one of the rights that God has given us is prayer. And so, beloved in the Lord, it is a right bestowed upon us because as children of the king, as children of God, we have legitimate access to the heavenly father. It is a right that is placed upon us, freely given to us, to have that relationship with the father through the salvation that we receive by means of his son and through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. That right gave us that legitimate uh, access to talk to the Father 24-7, all right? John chapter 1, verse 12 says that. It, John, uh, uh, John chapter 1, verse 12, and all the scripture that I'm going to be quoting, right, that I'll be saying from the Bible, uh, talks about our right to access the Father, talks about our right to have that father-son relationship or father-daughter relationship, but at the same time, God has given us as children an access and a direct access to him. John chapter 1, verse 12, but as many as received Christ, meaning those who have placed their faith in Christ, but as many as received Christ, to them who received Christ, God the Father gave them the right, gave them the authority to become children of God to those who believe in Christ's name. Amen? Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 tells us, For you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. You are all, every believing person who trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as their, as, as their Savior and Lord, according to this, are all children of God by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you also have Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 2, speaks of that right 
speaks of that access to the Father. Romans 5, 1 to 2 says, since we have been justified by faith, we were made right, acceptable, righteous, without sin in the sight of God. That is mean by justification. Since we have been justified by faith, cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, forgiven by his death and shedding of his blood, by faith justified, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ because we were once enemies of God when we were still sinners and unrepentant. But now we have become what? According to this, because of the death and the shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses us from our sins and that death and burial and resurrection made and granted us not only to become sons of God, but also to be with the Father in the future. But now we are, have access to God. We have, you can go directly to God. We have a relationship with God. And so, beloved in the Lord, it says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access. There you go. Through Jesus Christ, we have been given that privilege, that access by faith into, the, into this grace which we stand. All right? When we, when we receive, faith is a gift from God. When we receive that faith, that faith allows us to see our sinfulness. That faith allows us through the gospel not only to see how sinful we are, but also see that we need a Savior. And that grace is the Lord Jesus Christ. And our faith is anchored, attached. Our faith, we as a person who are believers in the Lord, says here, access by faith into his, in which we stand. Our faith is anchored to that rock, to that solid rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. That faith that God gave us is anchored and attached to that grace, which is a sure foundation, right? He is not a person or a, 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 the faith that we place on is not like shifting sand. It is a solid rock. And so, beloved in the Lord, it says, through Christ, we have also obtained access as a result of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, access to the Father. And then we have, of course, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, chapter 1, verse 6 says this. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who, on us who belong to his dear son. The grace is his son. Uh, the unmerited favor, right? The one who forgives us of all our sins. The one who took upon the punishment of our sins. The one who received the wrath and the judgment of God instead of us. And it says here, for the glorious grace he has poured out on us. When you and I came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that grace, the spirit of Christ was poured in us. We are covered by the powerful and precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and remove one, you know, sin once and for all. And in the sight of God, we are always righteous and acceptable. And that's why we have access to the Father. And it says here, who belongs to his dear son. You know, there's a passage in John chapter 10, 27, 28, and 29. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and I give them eternal life. And no man can snatch them away from my father's hand. Because my father's hand and my hand protect them. Nobody can take them or remove them away from my father's hand. That's how powerfully protected we are. And it says, uh, who belongs to his dear son. Nothing can remove or take away our salvation. Nothing can take us away from God as his children. So beloved in the Lord, that is only the introduction of the pleasures or the blessings of prayer. And one of the things that gives pleasure to our prayer is that it is a delight to our Lord. If you and I have this thinking, this, um, let's, say, let's say it's also a belief that prayer is burdensome, Right? Uh, that prayer is not really that important. 
that prayer is not an essential, integral part of our Christian growth, and therefore we do not uh, in, include that in our Christian discipline or practice, then we are a Christian that is proud. We are a Christian that is selfish. We are a Christians that are totally independent of God, and God is always opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The book of James chapter 5 says that. So, beloved in the Lord, God's children should find in their hearts and in their spirit that prayer is not only a privilege, all right, not only a divine right given to us to the Father, but prayer should be a delight. It is a delight to speak to the greatest person. It is a delight for us to talk to the Creator. It is, should be a delight for us, a pleasure for us to spend time with Him. If you and I find delight in spending time with people that we love, the people that we admire, the we, people that we respect, how much more that we should find it a delight and a pleasure to speak to the greatest being of all, our Creator, our Savior, our Lord, the one who has given us all the blessings, material, physical, and the spiritual blessings of heaven, the one who died for us. So therefore, beloved in the Lord, prayer should always bring, all right, first of all, a delight in our hearts because it surely would bring a delight to our Lord. Right? Proverbs 15, verse 8. I want you to take note of this, highlight this, memorize this, you know, place it in your heart. Proverbs 15, verse 8 says this. The prayer of the upright is what? It's God's delight. Did you hear that? Did you get that? The prayer of his child who is forgiven who has been cleansed from all his sin. The prayer of his child who longs to speak and commune with him is such a delight to the Father. I don't know how to tell you this. Um, you know, last October, I was in the Philippines. Uh, we're preparing for our short-term medical mission for this coming last week of January all the way to almost the middle of February. So I spoke um, at a church um, in Cantilan, Surigao del Sur. And it was not yet a pastor's, and, and I thought pastor's appreciation Month is uh, month of October is only here in the United States. I didn't realize that they also do pastors' appreciation in in the Philippines. So the date was I was there 13, 14, 15, 16. I think it was uh, October 13, 14, 15, uh, the Sunday in that particular week. So I spoke, and so they gave um, an appreciation, I believe, to their pastor, and, and I was asked to speak and to talk about, uh, like, marriage after the service. And so uh, the, uh, one of the pastors there, uh, not necessarily the main pastor, uh, I know Pastor Ron Sunil is the pastor there, but one of the pastors uh, or leaders of the church handed me uh, something, a love gift, um, not just for speaking uh, that Sunday and, and conducting the marriage counseling. But this, this is a thing that really stuck to me. So he gave me a love gift and I said, and this is what he said, Pastor, you know, all pastors should be appreciated every day. And, and I said, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think everyone should be appreciated every day. But he said, no because of the work that you do. You know, you, you left your church and you're preparing for missions and, you know, you, 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 you spend your time, your energy uh, away from your family and, and you give 
us time, you know, to, to listen to God's word and, and now to marriage counseling. And, and that's a lot of work. And, and you traveled a lot. And, and then he said, this is a small token of just how much I appreciate pastors. And he said, one in particular, you, for spending the time with our church and for giving us the message that we need to hear. And as, as a bonus, uh, we learned a, a good deal about, you know, the topic in marriage counseling. So I was blown away by that. Uh, he didn't, didn't have to do that. And then the following Sunday, uh, I was at Faith Bible Church of Tanay in Tanay Rizal, pastored by Pastor Midel uh, Mendez. Uh, so I spoke there, and sometime uh, before I left, Pastor Midel and his beautiful wife uh, gave me a beautiful uh, barong. Uh, it is not the usual, you know, uh, pussy type of barong, but it is a type of barong that you can wear during the cold season here in the United States. It's a black and a beige one. And it fit me uh, perfectly. So, and not only that, uh, his um, fellow pastor by the name of Edgar Ramos, or they call him Coach, did a painting on uh, painting on a banana queue on one side and a bundle of uh, bananas, right? That speaks of how I learned to give to the Lord by eating, you know, banana queue on on uh, every lunch for two years uh, instead of going to um, a uh, sari sari store or a street uh, type of uh, restaurant, uh, not restaurant, but an eatery. Uh, so I would eat banana queue for 50 cents or 25, 50 cents, and that would be my lunch instead of two pesos so I could save that money and give to the Lord. And, and that gesture, all right, and I'm sharing this with you, and that gesture brought delight into my heart. Number one, I don't know the guy in Cantilan. That's the first time I met him. Secondly, I've been with Pastor Midel and Pastor uh, Edgar, and uh, his wife, Prosy, would always remember to give us something. I mean, they are not necessarily uh, middle class. The, you know, they, they live by faith. And for them to come up, with something to give to you, which they don't have to, and to spend time uh, in their minds and in their hearts to look and pray for something to give to you, and then come out with that particular gift. Takes effort, takes planning, prayer. And it brought delight to me because I, I, I felt that they didn't have to do that. You know, uh, I have almost everything that I need in, in terms of clothing, in terms of the gifts, um, except for that painting. Uh, that was a beautiful painting. I'll bring it here on Sunday. Uh, I, I, from what I heard, it's about 35,000 pesos uh, uh, to get one like that or to paint uh, something like that. If, I felt that way as a human being. And if I felt that way as a pastor who, I don't, I don't know that person, that brother, that's the first time I met. I've known Pastor Medell and Pastor Edgar for a, no, a few years, uh, let's say less than five years or six years, and Sister Prosy, the wife of Pastor Medell, and to be able to do something like that, to appreciate and honor it. A prayer, a time spent with God says in Proverbs 15, verse 8, that the prayer of the upright is a delight to God. You're not giving him any offering in terms of substance, material. You're not exercising or exerting a lot of effort like contributing your time in renovating the church or going out on a medical mission. It says 
simply by spending time choosing to be with God, talking to Him in prayer, is a delight to Him. How much more when we do other spiritual services to God? All the more they are a delight to Him. You know, some of the parents, uh, whenever I would do counseling, some of the parents would complain to me that their children is, is, is of great burden because of their disobedience, disrespect to them, uh, and not walking with the Lord. So it brings a heavy, they, you know, they, they pour out their hearts to me and, and, and how those type of children bring headaches to them and heartache to them. I think the same can be said how God feels when we are disobedient children, when we have hard-headed, you know, hard hearts and uh, hard-headedness. It grieves the Holy Spirit. You will see that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, how we grieve the Holy Spirit. I'm spending a little bit of time here because The word of God says that when we pray, it is a delight to him. You know, God already knows what's in our minds. He already knows what's in our hearts. He knows what we are going to bring up to him. Uh, you will see that in, 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 in Psalm 139, that God knows uh, everything about us. That even before, you know, our lying down, our sitting down, our getting up, God is aware of that. And even the very first thought, the very first word that we're going to speak, the Lord is aware of that. He's mindful of that. And so Psalm 139, uh, let me read this, uh, how... God is all-knowing. O Lord, you, ha you have searched me and you have known me. You know when I sit down and when I get up or rise up. You understand my thought from afar. You know how far earth to heaven? <laughs> no man can measure the distance. It is very, 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 very far. And yet it says here, you understand my thought from afar. That's where God is in heaven. You scrutinize my path and my lying down. And you are intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue. Behold, thou know it all. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. While what God says in his word, like the one that I just read, read right now, is important to us because those are his language. Those are his words. God also gives importance to what we say. That's why he delights in listening to us even though he already knows what we have in mind and what we have in our tongues and what we have in our hearts. Just, just the pleasure, just the, 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 the delight of listening to us brings joy into God's heart. It means that God sincerely longs for us to be with him. He longs for us to commune with him. He longs for us to talk to him. He longs to listen to our longings, to our desires, to our prayers, to our words. Anyway, since he knows what we're going to bring to him, 
he is also the one responsible in sipping true, or in Satagalog sinasala, analyzing which one of our prayers or which of our prayers are in line with his perfect will and which of those prayers are not. But the fact that you and I spend time with him, it matters to God. It is important to God. It brings pleasure to God. It is a delight to God. So as believers in the Lord, we bring delight to God's heart when we seek him in prayer, when we commune, commune with him on a personal basis or in a corporate group like this. In other words, God smiles, rests upon the sincerity or the longing that we have in our hearts because every Every word of every words of those prayers, he listens to. You know, there's a prayer that God does not listen to. You know that, right? Right. There's a book. There, there's a passage in the book of Isaiah that the Lord said that He turns His ear from that prayer. All right. He, he doesn't listen to that kind of prayer. But God delights in listening to our prayers as believers in the Lord. I'm trying to, there you go. Here you go. In Isaiah 59, verse 2. Isaiah 59, verse 2. The Lord said, But your iniquities, or it could be said sins, or transgressions, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. What is that separation? And your sins have hidden his face, from you, so that he does not listen. He does not hear. So if we have an, an unrepentant heart, and if we are, there is unwillingness for us to ask for forgiveness, to acknowledge our sin before God, sin separates us from God. And therefore, he will not hear or listen because we are not willing to repent. On the contrary, God smiles, rest on prayers that are sincere. And those kind of prayer reach the throne of God. And it really makes a difference, right? Not only to God, most importantly, but to those who bring their petitions, their praises, their thanksgiving, even their confession of sins before God. Because the Bible will never lie. God will never tell us lie. It's not that kind of a God. So if Proverbs 15, 8 says, the prayer of the upright is his delight, take it to heart. Start, you know, if you have not really sought God in prayer, may this be a great reminder and at the same time challenge for those of us who name the name of Christ, for those of us who claim that we are children of God, that when we come to God with a sincere heart in prayer, it brings delight to him. If there are things, people that bring delights in our hearts, and you know how it feels, how much more our prayer, how joyful God is, how it puts smiles on his face when we come to him in prayer. It is a human privilege, 
but it is also a divine right because we are God's children. And through Christ, he has given us access to God because God, who is rich in grace, gave us grace, his son, to die on the cross for us so that the richness of Christ will dwell, dwells in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have access to God. So let us use that privilege. Let us use the access that God has given us, you know, to talk to him in prayer tonight. All right? So I hope uh, you are encouraged as you listen to this, uh, his word. Uh, the next time we'll talk about the other pleasures of prayer, which is, you know, uh, prayer brings dependence of, uh, of the soul to the Father. And it also defeats, you know, Satan as the seducer of the saints, of the believers. And it also, prayer gives us the way of deliverance. It also gives us a defense against Satan and the demons. And you will see the uh, dynamism of uh, those who come to God in prayer. And of course, uh, prayer brings us discernment uh, when we seek him with all our hearts. So let's look to God in prayer and ask him to bless our time, remaining balance of this time. Our Father God, we thank you that through your word, we realize and we hopefully understand uh, of the privilege you have given us and the right to access you by means of prayer. And secondly, we thank you and praise you that when we pray, it brings delight to you. And then thirdly, Lord, we thank you uh, for the fact that through prayer, uh, you have given us, Lord, uh, blessings untold uh, because you're a God who delights in listening to the prayer, uh, prayers of your people. May we take it to heart, Lord. May we believe your word, Proverbs 15, uh, verse 8, and may, and may we practice this, Lord, uh, so that it would always bring joy into your heart and smile into your holy face. Bless your people, Lord. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, beloved in the Lord, we'll shift from our... Uh, live Facebook uh, uh, feed into our Zoom, right? Uh, Zoom uh, meeting that we have is that is a place where we gather together to bring our praises and our thanksgiving to God. Okay, so at this time. Uh